Ooh, that's rough. All right, so here's the plan. Okay, I kind of looked at your test just to see what you should focus on. Uh, and I'm just going to do a couple of them with you. Then did y'all get my email? No. Yes. Okay, listen. Some of y'all do not know how to take derivatives. I don't know how we got here, but I gave you a little practice delta math. If you have time, do it. If you don't, don't pick that over this. This is for a grade. That's for extra credit. Okay, but it'll give you some easy checks on do you know how to take derivatives or not? There are three rules we've covered. Product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. Quotient rule, a lot of y'all are subtracting it backwards. Chain rule, I don't even know what's going on. And then product rule, it seems like some people just forget to use it. So let's get started. Let's take a look at number this one. This one, number eight. Okay, there's a, or I'm going to try to pick ones that have questions very similar on your exam or on your test. Okay, so we're doing number eight. Okay, but remember the numbering is kind of crazy because I just pulled them off of APS. Okay, so it says, which of the following is an equation for the line tangent to the graph of G? What are the two ingredients that you need to write the equation for any line? Point and a slope. Very good. So I want you to write down point and slope. Okay, anytime you're writing the equation of a tangent line, those are going to be your two ingredients. Okay, then from there, they tell you part of the point. What do they give you for your x value? Okay, they tell me my x is a 2. So 2 comma something. And now to find the y value, I need to plug back into the original. Now notice that they tell you what g is right here. Okay, it says that g of x is x times f of x. So then g of 2 would be 2 times f of 2. Okay, look at that. See if that makes sense. We're plugging into the original g of x function. So it's going to be 2 times f of 2. Then what will I use for f of 2? What does it tell me? Okay, look right here. We want regular f of 2. It's how much? 3. And what is 2 times 3? 6. So my y value is six. So two comma six. Okay, the next thing that I need is my slope. And remember, slope comes from taking a derivative. Now, if I want to take the derivative of x times f of x, what rule do I have to use? Not power rule, but it does start with a p. Product, Product rule, very good. This is x times f of x. You're going to need to use product rule to take that derivative. So let's write our pieces over here to the side. They okay, may be, I guess here is fine. Okay, so my u is going to be an x. My v is an f of x. What is u prime or the derivative of x by itself? One. Okay, very good. Then when I take the derivative of f, what is it going to be called? F prime of x. Very good. Now, if you did chain rule, you would do f goes to f prime. Remember, the core stays the same, and then you multiply its derivative at the back. But if this is just an x, what is its derivative? 1. That's why you don't do chain rule if it's just an x. Because even if you did, you just times by 1 anyways, and it doesn't change anything. All right, so let's take our derivative. Our original function was g. So now we have g prime. And it's going to be this plus this. Remember, for product rule, it doesn't matter which one you do first. OK, but be careful about f versus f prime, OK? Because we're going to use different information as we plug in based on which one it is. 
Okay, we're plugging in our X, which is a two. So it'd be two times F prime of two plus one times F of two. And then remember that this number and this number are gonna be given to you either in a table or they could just be embedded in the question. So in this case, what does it tell me F prime of two is? Negative five and regular F of two is still three. So we have two times F prime is negative five plus one times regular F is three. Two times negative five is negative 10 plus three is negative seven. Okay, once you have your ingredients, you're gonna write your equation in what's called point slope form. So remember, it's y blank equals blank x blank. And then when I plug in those pieces, remember the x and the y's are gonna go in with opposite signs, but the slope will go in with its correct value. So my slope was a negative seven, I'm gonna put a negative seven in the middle. And then the X for my point was a positive two, so I'm gonna put in a minus two. My Y is a six, so I'm gonna put in a minus six. Okay, then I look at my answer choices and none of them match. But remember, you have two equations for a line. This is point slope, these are slope intercept. So all that you have to do is solve for Y. Remember to do that, you're gonna take your slope and distribute. What's negative seven times X? Negative seven X. What's negative seven times negative two? Plus 14. And then last step, I want Y equals, what do I need to do to get rid of this minus six? Add it across here. So I'm gonna have Y equals negative seven X plus So it'd be 14 plus six would be 20. Do you see the answer up there? <laughs> Get it? Because it's <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, next one I want to do with you is number nine. There's a question very similar to number nine, same page at the top. Okay, when you have a little cubed like that, remember that that means, okay, remember that if your three is little like that, that means that the entire sine 2x, all of that is cubed. Oh, yeah, on the same page up at the top. Sorry. There are a couple. I just was lazy and didn't renumber them. Okay, so we have y. We want dy dx. What rule does this one require? Product quotient chain. Oh, no, you said all of them. It's chain. Okay, here's how you know it's got layers. The outside layer is the cubed. The middle layer is the trig, the side, and the middle, middle layer is 2x. Okay, so let's go one layer at a time. Let's start with the cubed. The three comes to the front. What is the new power on the sine 2x? It was cubed, now it's gonna be squared. Okay, then I'm gonna move in one layer and multiply by the derivative of sine 2x. What's the derivative of sine 2x? Cosine 2x. But then I have to go into the inside layer and do 2x's derivative. What's 2x's derivative? Times two. So you're working layer by layer from the outside in. Remember though, the core of that cubic doesn't change. You do the three, power it down, and then multiply the derivative behind it don't replace the original core. So two times three is gonna give me what number in the front? Six, which means it's gonna be answer 
see. All right. Now that we've done that, I want you to put a big star next to the question below that number seven. Okay, there's a question just like number seven on your test. So what rule are we going to use product, quotient, or chain if our f of x is 3x root 2x plus 6? Product is correct. Okay, now it will also have chain rule in it. So if you said that, that's right. The only one you're not using is no quotient rule. Remember, that's for division. Okay, so... I want you to put here PR for product rule. This is the first part. This is the second part. Also, if you write big, try to write small. Okay, so my U is going to be a 3X. And my V is going to be a 2X plus 6 square rooted. Okay, to take the derivatives of those two pieces, let's start with the 3x. What's the derivative of 3x? Easy, 3, very good. Now, for my square root 2x plus 6, I need to rewrite that as a power. What is a square root the same as? What power? I'm going to write up here a 1 half. Okay, so that I can take the derivative. So swap out your square root symbol for a set of parentheses with a one half exponent. Let's take the derivative. What rule is this piece gonna need? Chain rule, because it's not x to the half, it's two x plus six to the half. So remember, I'm gonna keep that core the same, take the derivative around it. So my one half is gonna come down to the front. What is the new power gonna be? Negative one. negative one half but remember the core stays the same and then i times its derivative behind it what's the derivative of 2x plus 6 times 2 which means in just a second i'm going to be like oh a 2 times a half those can cross out so that'll make our math a little bit easier okay so the 2 and the half i'm going to go ahead and eliminate those let's do our product rule so we have f prime of x equals, uh, let's do this diagonal first. So it's three <laughs> times two x plus six to the half plus three x, two x plus six to the negative a half. Everybody good to there so far? Okay, what are my halves the same as? Square root. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 square root 2x plus 6 plus 3x. Now, where am I going to put this square root if its half power is negative a half on the bottom? So this is really over 2x plus 6. Okay. Any questions to there? Okay, for your test, it's going to say that you need to get your derivative as a single fraction. That means you can't have this plus that. We need to get a common denominator is what it says. So if my fraction on the right has a root 2x plus 6 on the bottom, then I'm going to need to write a root 2x plus 6 on the first part too. However, if I multiply a root 2x plus 6 on the bottom, where else do I have to put it? On the top, which means I'm going to have another root 2x plus 6 right here. Okay, remember, you have to put it top and bottom if you're going to multiply it onto the term. So here's what we have so far. 3, now question, if you do a root 2x plus 6 times another root 2x plus 6, what are you going to get? 2x plus 6. Here's why, in case you don't understand. You're doing a square root times its own self, then it becomes the square root squared, and they eliminate each other. So my 3, root 2x times root 2x becomes a regular 2x plus 6. k plus 3x over 2x 
plus six. Okay, then from there, you just gotta clean it up because for your test, it's mo this part is multiple choice. You would be looking to see which answer is the same. So let's times this three in here. What's three times two X? So that's a six X plus three times six would be 18 plus another three X. And then from there, what can we put together on the top? Yeah, the six and the three X are gonna give you how many? Nine X plus 18 over root two X plus six. That would be your final answer. Okay, now this question doesn't just ask you to take the derivative, but we are almost done. It says to find horizontal and vertical tangents. Which part do I set equal to zero for a horizontal tangent, the top or the bottom? Horizontal tangent, get out your pink sheets. If you don't remember, horizontal is the top. So remember that's gonna be top equal to zero or nine X plus 18 equal to zero. And then how would I get rid of the plus 18? Minus the 18 across and then divide by nine, what would we get? Negative two, very good. So when X is negative two, I'm gonna have a horizontal slope or a zero slope, okay? It also asks me to find vertical tangents. What part are we setting equal to zero for a vertical tangent? Wow. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna put VT is bottom equal to zero, which would be root two X plus six equals zero. How do I get rid of the square root? Square both sides, but question, when you square zero, what do you still get? Zero. So really, you just have two X plus six is zero. How do I get rid of the plus six? Minus it. So now two X equals negative six, and then last step, divide by two, so X would be negative three, okay? But for your test, this derivative part, you should be able to do. Okay, do you have a question? At the beginning, you mean here? Um, here? You're meaning cross these two out? Because uh, they're not in the same fraction. So basically, uh, think about it with, whenever you're trying to do weird stuff, think about it with numbers. If you had five plus one fifth, can you just cross the fives out and get one? You see what I'm saying? So if it's a plus in the middle, you can't do that. Now, if it was a multiply, then you could cross the fives out. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. That took me a second to get what you're asking. Um, all right. I want to do like two more and then I want to take a break and let you kind of work on stuff. <sighs> Can you skip ahead to number 27 right here? All right, read through it, fill in your find given when. Yes? I didn't. Are we still not at the top though? Seven still? Trash. But isn't this our first season in the SEC? So you know, we gotta we gotta give ourselves a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Are you pouring salt into your bread? Oh, that's what I'm saying. I'll take it. And then put some. No. All right, five, two, one. You can do it. Fill it out. Okay. Salt. 
And then from there, so then I come out, and then good job. You did all the hard stuff, right? All right, can somebody tell me what we're finding? DCDT. Okay, DCDT, very good. Okay, then they gave us a given. What's our given? Oh, really? It's, it kind of says when, but what's the D that we have? D, mm -hmm. D, P, D, T is 41. Okay, really, that's kind of more a when, but it's fine. We're just going to put these together for this one. Okay, and then and, what else? Uh, the C is 15. And then for the equation, notice that instead of you having to use a formula chart, okay, they're telling you the relationship is this. So write that down. It says P squared equals, okay, P squared equals 20 minus C to the third power. Okay, take a second and try that derivative on your own. Don't forget your DDTs on all your letters. I don't think I'm ever going to do this. Yeah. It's like I'd say the hardest thing. Is We're about to be on something. <laughs> All right, P squared, what's the derivative? Tell me, tell me. Yes, 2P dp dt. Okay, on the other side, what rule were you supposed to use? Chain rule, very good. So I'm gonna take the derivative, this is the core. So I'm gonna take the derivative around it. The three goes to the front. What's the new power on my 20 minus C? Now it's squared, but then I have to multiply by the derivative of the 20 minus C. What's the derivative of 20 minus C? Minus one. Good job. Great. Okay, from there, we're ready to plug stuff in. So I see I have a 2P. Now, was P given to me? Then I'm going to just leave that as an open parentheses for my P. But dp dt, I know, what was that? 41. 41. Then I have three parentheses, 20 minus, what was my c value? 15 squared times negative one, and then dc dt is what I'm trying to find. Okay, then when I get to this point, I see that there's a p that's missing, okay? And it's not what I'm supposed to be looking for. So we need to go back and find what this P is. Where do you go back to if you're missing information? The original, the original. very good. So I'm gonna come back to right here and I'm gonna say, okay, well, if I know that my C is a 15, will that help me find P? Okay, just like if they give you one leg of the triangle, but not the other, right? So we're gonna do P squared equals 20 minus 15 cubed. What is 20 minus 15? So P squared equals five cubed, which is 125, very good. So P squared is 125 and then take the square root. So P equals the square root of 125. Now you run into a little bit of arithmetic here. This is really geometry. 
Okay, but we have to simplify this. And here's how I know. Look at your answers. Do any of them have a square root of 125? They all have a square root five. That means we need to reduce. So what perfect square can 125 break down into? It'd be 25 times five, right? 25 times five, that would put me back at 125. But now this one's perfect. What's the square root of 25 gonna be? Regular five root five. Does that make sense? So we're gonna use this as our P value. So in this spot, I'm gonna put five root five. And now we're ready to solve. In your calculator, I want you to only multiply the numbers, do not include the root five. So we're doing two times five times 41 on the left-hand side. 410, very good. Now it's 410 root five. Now, could you have done that without a calculator? Hopefully, what's two times five? 10, and then times it by 41, that's where we got the 410. Okay, now let's go to this side. 20 minus 15 is how many? Five squared? 25 times three? 75. Multiplied by a negative one makes it a negative 75 BCDT. And then what is my last step to get rid of the minus 75 in the front? Divide negative 75 on the bottom. So we have DCDT equals 410 root 5 over negative 75. Okay, then in your calculator, when you reduce it, just don't put the root five in or else it's gonna come out as a decimal. Use the pretty fraction, do 410 over 75. 82 over 15 is correct, which is answer B. Okay, negative 82 root five over 15. Okay, but make sure that if you're trying to match an answer choice, that you don't put in, for example, a pi or a root five. Otherwise, it's gonna force your answer into a decimal form when you're trying to match a fraction. Okay. Ooh. All right. Um, the last one that I want to do right now, you really needed to already do part A. So will you do number 12, part A, if you haven't already? We're gonna pick up with part B. Uh, look at the one on the thing. There probably are. Should be base of a triangle. Okay, so do part A with your table. Wait, did we do that? Yeah, we did. Well, maybe we did survive. So, yeah, maybe you did it, which is great, and I love to see that. Okay, we already. Oh, y'all did it in the twenty sixth. All right, let's get started. That's the right number 12. You're on the wrong number 12. All right. Do that one. Also, sorry that I'm going to change the area of time. Area of time. I guess it's a happy age. Really? Given the of rate uh-huh, so the rate that is changing would be that, and then when is the rate that is changing would be that, and then when is the rate that is changing would be that, and then when is the Right. Wait, no, if it's a if it's a variable, it's like a substitute for x. Right. Uh, wait, wait. So it's an HDT for example. And then the equation would be the area of the and what rule are you going to need to do that? Okay. No, what are you saying? Okay. 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 Okay.
Alright, come on guys. Yeah. Okay, let's set up our five. Yeah. Five. Yes. No, I didn't hear it. Wait, that's a fun way to the nurse after the six right here. Okay, okay. And then your given should be DBDT and DHDT, but you'll have to go back and read the question to find them. Since we did that one, we're going to do what I said. Oh, you're talking about this one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Four and the three X. DBDT is. Uh -huh. uh, but you're multiplying. You can do four times three. Silly girl. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you should get zero as your final answer. Yeah. Did you really? No. Oh. Okay, let me print this for uh, Dyson. Then. What are you stuck on? So, I know okay. it's a it's yeah. What does it say? The height is decreasing at a rate of two. And if it's decreasing, it's two. Okay. And it says, find how to go to change of area. And then it says when your height is six, your area is Okay, your H is six, your H is Then look on your cheat sheet for the area of a triangle. <laughs> I don't have the schedule, but I will. Oh, like in the first time, 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 the so Tina, the like Satan and square, keep the four X the same, and then you'll find the trigger in the back. So so you is one half base, and Were you here when we did it? Uh -huh. Did I get it back to I might have just gone to that part. I'm sure it's my mistake. One half. Thank you. Um, I'm okay. I would try to do it before Thursday so you get good practice for your test.
I'm gonna. Can I just keep this? So I don't forget. I've been. I've been sliding. It's okay. All right. Uh, I'm not gonna do all of part A, but here's what your derivative should say. Okay, your equation was area equals one half base times height. And what rule did you need to take the derivative of that? Okay, you should have done product rule. So dA dt equals, thank you. It would be one half B dH dt plus one half H dB dt. Now, listen, if you put it in a different order, like you put this one first, remember addition, that doesn't matter. As long as you have the same pieces that I do, okay, it doesn't matter if you reverse them. Okay, from here, I go to plug in. I have one half, and then I notice my base is unknown. DH, DT, it says the height is decreasing at two. Uh-huh, so decreasing is my negative. Okay, then it tells me that my height is six, and my DB, DT is four. And then I'm going to have to go back and find this. This is going to happen over and over again, that if you're missing a piece of the puzzle, you go back to the original area equation. What did they tell me besides the height being six? Area is 36. That's enough for me to find what the height must have been. So I'm going to do 36 equals one half. My base is unknown and my height is Six. What is half of six on this right hand side? 3b equals 36. Well, then what does the base have to be? Divide by three on both sides, the base has to be 12. Okay, but remember, you're going to have to go back and find the little pieces that you're missing based on what they gave you. Then you'll put a 12 right here, you should get zero. All right, let's go on to part B. Okay, little star on part B. This is an angle question. You have to know how to do this for your test. Okay, it says find the rate of change between the base and the hypotenuse when the height is six and the area is 36. So let's draw a little triangle over here. Okay, this is my base. This is my height. And then for my hypotenuse, I'm gonna call it C. Okay, because I don't want to have an H for hypotenuse and an H for height. That's going to be too confusing. Okay, first thing I want you to do is put your theta in the correct corner. Your theta should be the angle between the base and the hypotenuse. Is it going top or bottom? Okay, bottom is correct. Okay, then it says find the rate of change of the angle. So I'm finding d theta dt. I am finding d theta dt. And then it says when the height is, oh, are you okay? okay. So when the height is six and the area is 36, that's kind of the same time we were already looking at. Okay, for your equation, this is very important. Okay, the same thing that's about to happen on this triangle is going to happen on your test. When you pick, when you pick the sides of your triangle, you want to pick the sides that you know crap about. Okay, gentlemen, are we ready? Okay, so looking at this triangle, which two sides do I know the DDTs for? B, H, or C? Which letters? B and H. Do I know D, C, D, T? Then don't pick C. So I need these two. Then do I want so, ha, uh, or toa? Toa. Okay, so write down tan theta equals. And then for tan, it's opposite over adjacent. What is my opposite side? H over my adjacent side is. B, and when you take the derivative, this is a fraction, what rule are you going to need to take the derivative on this side? Mm. Quotient rule. This exact same thing happens on your test. That's why we're doing it together. So on this side, let's do your derivative of your tan. What's the derivative of tan theta? 
secant squared theta, thank you, d theta dt equals, and then on this side, it's going to need quotient rule. So let's set it up down here at the bottom, and then we'll put the rule over here to the side. So remember, quotient rule is high and ho. Hi is H, Ho is B. What is the derivative of H or D high? DH DT is correct. Okay, then for Ho, it's B. What is D Ho? D B D T. Does it matter which diagonal you use for quotient rule? Yes. Okay, it has to be OD high first. So it's going to be B D H D T minus H D B D T. And then all over your Ho squared is going to be B squared. Now remember, what I'm solving for is d theta dt right here. So what that means is everything else in the equation, I should be able to plug something in for. Let's start with this right-hand side. Okay, plug in your numbers for b, h, and db dt and dh dt. Okay, hopefully you have a calculator so it'll make the next step easier. So my b is 12. Remember, we found that already. My dh dt is negative 2. My h is 6, thank you. And my db dt is 4. Okay, all over. My base is 12 squared. d theta dt over here. Now let's talk about what we do with this secant. Okay, secant is which one flipped? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Who is secant's buddy? Cosine. Cosine is A over H. What will secant be? H over A. Go back to your triangle. Okay, so I'm going to put here, use H over A for secant. My base, it told me, is 12. My H for height is 6. But this H is referring to hypotenuse over adjacent. So question, looking at your triangle, do I know the hypotenuse and the adjacent already? No, I know the two legs. I know the 6 and the 12, but I don't know the H. How can I find it? It's a right triangle. Okay, so in your calculator right now, find that missing side. We're going to round it off just to one decimal. Should be 13 point something. Okay, so do 6 squared plus 12 squared, then take the square root. Okay, 13.4 is correct. And now... Now that I know my hypotenuse, which of these is the adjacent for me to put it over, the 6 or the 12? The 12 is the adjacent. So it's going to be 13.4 over 12 quantity squared. And how do I solve to get d theta dt by itself if I want to get rid of this fraction in the front? Multiply by its what? Reciprocal. So to get rid of a 13.4 over 12, I'm going to times by a 12 over 13.4. And then in your calculator, this is what I want you to do. Just type in all of this at the same time. So do pretty fraction times pretty fraction. And you should get negative 0 point something. Yeah. It's good for you have the right circle, but so y'all got the right circle.
This is negative number mm -hmm. four, minus number four, three, two, two, mm -hmm. and that's what it's like zero all the time. I'll just send you up for them. But you had all the math right. I just think I forgot to type the negative in. <laughs> Some of the questions are the Again, you can't plug in any numbers until after you've taken the derivative. So it depends if it's a number representing a variable or whether it's a shift. As I told the paper towels off, it's the range of Right? Because I'm told in the paper towels off, it's in case small. It's a height measure. So that's why we should plug in the H at the beginning before we do it. All right, y'all, get some work done. Oh, okay. Zero All right, very last one. This one's a little bit tricky. Okay, I think we put the whatever that is away, please. All right, last one. Okay, it looks like a triangle. So I just pulled it off of an AP test. 
thinking, oh, we've done a lot of triangles. Let's see what happens. Okay, it says in the figure above, PQ represents a 40 foot ladder. Okay, then it says P is against the wall, Q is level on the ground, the ladder is slipping down the wall. What distance is RQ at the instant when Q is moving along the ground three fourths as fast as P? Okay, find given when and equation. All right. So the first thing that I want you to do to just simplify the way this question looks is we're not going to call RQ, RQ. We're just going to pick letters for the side. So I'm going to let this be P. I'm going to let this be Q. <clears throat> now, quick question. Do I need to come up with a number or, or a letter for the 40 side? <clears throat> no, because is it changing? Absolutely. Great. It's a fixed constant, but yes, you had the right idea. Okay, so we are finding, look what it says. What is the distance RQ? So we are finding side Q. Notice we're not finding how fast Q is changing. That would be DQ DT. They're asking us to find regular Q, which is that side. Okay, then it says at the instant when Q is moving along the ground, that's DQ DT. <clears throat> at the instant when Q is moving along the ground three fourths as fast as P. So write that down. DQ DT is three fourths as fast as DQ DT. What is happening? <laughs> Okay, sorry. All right, so what equation do you think that we're gonna do? Three sides of a triangle. So in this case, it's gonna be P squared plus Q squared equals 40 squared. All right, gentlemen, are we ready? Okay, we're about to take the derivative. This part's all normal. What's the derivative of P squared? There we go plus what about the derivative of 40 squared zero okay from here the only thing we have to plug in is that they told me that dq dt is three fourths of dp dt i'm going to plug that in right here so i'm going to have 2p dp dt plus two Q, and then when I get to DQ DT, I know that it's three fourths DP DT. Okay, what I want you to do right now is solve for the letter E, okay? So let's make this a little bit nicer. Do we notice that we have a two Q times a three fourths? What would that be the same as? Six fourths, very good. So if you want, you can do that. I'm gonna put three over two, but it's the same. Okay, so two times three over four would be two times three is six over four is three over two. Okay, and then from here, I'm gonna keep solving for P. So let's take our three Q, blah, blah, blah. Let's minus it across. So now it's 2P dp dt equals negative 3 over 2Q dp. Good so far? Okay, then we want to get P by itself. What do we need to divide by? dp dt and 2. Because remember, we want P to be alone. So we're going to divide the 2 and the dp dt off both sides. What is going to cancel on both sides? dp dt is now gone from the equation. 
So here's what we have so far. These are gone and these are gone. So I have P equals negative three over four Q. Now, if you're not sure how that happened, think about dividing by two, you're cutting it in half. So your three over two would now be three over four. Okay, where can I put this as a substitution to solve for Q? Where do we always step back into? The original, very good. So come back up here to the top. Remember that P squared plus Q squared is 40. Well, then I can basically take that substitution for my P and put it right here. So it's going to be negative 3 fourths Q plus Q squared equals 40 squared. Remember, when you square a fraction, you need to square the top and the bottom. So what is my negative 3 over 4 going to be once I square it? 9 over 16 Q squared plus Q squared. Okay, now I want to add these guys. Then I need to get a common denominator. This is one whole Q, but how can I write it in 16? 16 over 16, right? That way it's still one, but I'm putting it in a common denominator. Then what's nine over 16 plus 16 over 16? Equals 40 squared. How can I get rid of this fraction in the front? Multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to put 16 over 25 on both sides. Can you go ahead and multiply that out in your calculator? Q squared is going to be 40 squared times 16 over 25. Forty squared times sixteen over twenty-five is ten twenty-four. And then last step, take the square root. And the square root of ten twenty-four is thirty-two. Okay, now let me say there is not one that hard on your test. I picked it off of an AP test and didn't realize how hard it was till first period. So very <laughs> sorry. <laughs> for first period, I had to look at it for a few minutes to remember how to do it. Okay, there's not one that hard. Okay, your test is on Thursday. Do your extra credit if you want more practice. I got all of the Thanks, 
So really, if you mix up the big that would be a lot of different I think you're going to be I love the help. Who is in this? There you go. Yes. You are the one who stole my couch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew it was you. You are the So the evil goes to the baby. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, you have to have like two very Okay, now can I do it because nobody's in class? Yeah, we're about to leave anyway. Okay. 
Hi, Benji. Uh, well, no, but he had a field trip today, and now seventh period is the class they have to go. And it's my sister's birthday. Oh, how you weren't here. I know. I wrote yesterday. Huh? You weren't here for wrote yesterday. Was it here for what? You were here yesterday. Yes, it was. Oh, where? Well, oh. hold on. I took a half day, so I was gone in the morning. Oh, okay. But then at like twelve thirty, and then I stayed for tutoring because I didn't want to have to like an extra tutoring if I cancel on Monday. You know, that's my normal tutoring day, and I didn't want to skip. <laughs> Plus, also, you know, for this when I have had you, and I was desperately avoiding being around her, so. I know something that I'm really excited. I'm only a pain in the spirit. You have to have to ask you something to get up. When you didn't even come there, you didn't even dress off for practice. You came to practice for the zone. I'll see you tomorrow. And I'll, I'll be ready to have a good attitude. <laughs> I just needed my moment, you know? No, because Miss Jordan, we had a mile, right? After the mile, immediately I got my period. So, like, I'm feeling the cramps and everything. So, we finally get into the mat, and I'm just on the floor. And I, I, I like, I finally got to open my towel off, and I thought it was on the other side of the mat. So, I'm telling her the mat is like, please, like, I'm struggling to get my words up. Can you please get my water? And you're like, which one? Which one? I'm like, the blue one. I'm trying 